Mm. Chuck, did you pay the yep. electricity bill? Uh, I thought you were gonna do that. No, this month it's on you. Is it money? Uh, um, uh, well, hey, need to how did the interview with uh, TPN go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not good as it turns out. Um, apparently it's frowned upon when in the middle of the interview you break into tears at the mere prospect of trading Dennis Smith Jr. Yeah. And when they called back, initially he had just been traded and I was crying again, so I think I blew that. Oh, man. But hey, come on, man. You gotta be excited about getting Porzingis. Oh, that's true. Porzingis, that, yeah, KP, yes, baby. Yes, that, that is true. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt KP is legit. And I always said that if they did trade Dennis Smith, I would only want to do it if it was part of like a blockbuster deal for another young, established star. Which I feel like I feel like he is. I mean, I know he's got the knee and everything like that, but he's 23, and I think that he's gonna work well with Luca. So it's a deal I would do probably every time. Yeah. Well, do you think they'll give you a call after? Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, uh. Hello? Hello? I, I gotta take this. Hello? Yes. Yeah, this is uh, Derek. Mm -hmm. So like, not the main, but, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Cool, L listen, sir, thank you, you are not, you're not gonna, uh, you already hung up. Yep, you hung up, all right. So, so what's there? Who's in Oh yeah, that yeah, that was uh, that was TPN. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got a job. I got it. You... Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Tell me you got the main anchor job. <laughs> no, no, I did not. Not the no. no. Well, no. And so you still at least got your own show or co anchor, right? Uh, sort of. Not really though. Well, I'm confused. Here. Sort of. No, yeah. Really I'm confused. What did you get? Okay, so this is how it's explained to me, right? So with like ESPN, you got ESPN 1, 2, 3, yeah. I don't know, there's probably a 4, the Ocho yeah. thing, 8, was that like just in the movie Dodgeball? Yeah, I, regard, the Ocho. Yeah. The Ocho. Regardless, uh, so in, I'm told in the near future, yeah, when TP, okay. you know, so TPN's got to roll out its main product first, yeah. but I'm told in the future there's going to be a 2, I'm not at 2, and then there's going to be a 3, the third one. I don't know if that's a working title. He seemed kind of confused too. But okay, uh, okay, yeah. But for the third one, which will have at least two shows a month, I got the anchor job for that. So yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I, I guess you could say things are getting serious. Well, hey, hey, you gotta start somewhere, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, at least you're getting to uh, yep. you know get paid to talk about sports. Oh yeah. yeah. No, no. So, Derek, wait. You're not doing this for free, are you? Derek. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, come on. I mean, not free. I mean, technically, money is being exchanged. It's just not coming in my direction. Wait. So I I'm told it's standard that when you when you do a startup at this point, that you actually pay to launch your show. And then if it catches on, then they buy the rights to the show, and yeah. then you can start getting paid. But um, well, hey, hey, think of it this way, though. Think of it this way. With all the layoffs in sports media in the last few years, I had to be the cheapest contract that they looked at for a job, right? So yeah, yeah, I gotta start somewhere. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, Derek. Um, I, well, well, hey, hey. Uh, everybody, hopefully, things will work out, man. And, and, and congrats. Yeah, hey, it's a, it's yes. ADP, salute. It's a yeah. <laughs>
In fact, another former Nick may actually end up having a Monte Ellis-like impact in Big D. Tim Hardaway Jr. comes to Dallas, like Monte Ellis before him, with a reputation as a defensive sieve and as a volume scorer with constant bad shot selection. But their comparisons go beyond this. While Monte Ellis was viewed as a consolation prize for the Mavericks after they struck out on Dwight Howard in 2013, he formed a lethal two-man game with Dirk Nowitzki. The pick and roll between Dirk and Monte was nearly unguardable. And while his game is not the same as Tim Hardaway Jr.'s, being that Ellis was a slasher and Hardaway Jr. is much more so of a jump shooter, it's in that pick and roll their efficiency is somewhat comparable. Obviously this isn't apples to apples, but if you look at Hardaway's game this year, his efficiency in the pick and roll as the primary ball handler has been substantially better. In fact, 30% of his scoring opportunities have come in the pick and roll as the primary ball handler. And in such situations, he's converting at a higher clip than Kevin Durant or Stephen Curry, or Bradley Beal for that matter. But what else can Tim Hardaway Jr. bring to the Mavericks, more so than even Monte Ellis? Ellis, despite being a 29% three-point shooter for his career, never shied away from the opportunity. Hardaway Jr., despite being a 35.5% three-point shooter, also doesn't shy away from opportunities. And with Luka Doncic running the show in Dallas now, the Mavericks have skyrocketed up to number three in the league in unguarded attempts. What's an unguarded attempt, you ask? Any shot with at least four feet of separation between the shooter and the nearest defender is deemed an unguarded shot. So with the Mavericks being third in league in such situations, you know there are going to be plenty of good looks for Hardaway Jr. and the rest of his teammates. It's why guys like Harrison Barnes and Wesley Matthews enjoyed bumps in terms of their three-point percentage and overall makes in Dallas this year. It'll be interesting as a result to see how they do the rest of the season now in new situations. Obviously with Wes going to the Knicks, now believed to be headed to the Pacers, and with Harrison Barnes in Sacramento. One big difference, however, which actually could be beneficial to Tim Hardaway Jr., is that Monte Ellis had to be Dirk's Robin in Dallas. Now granted at the time, Dirk was still Dirk, but Monte Ellis had a substantial burden, having to average 19 points per game, and at times be Dallas's primary option in crunch time. That role now belongs to Luka Doncic, and at the start of next season, once Porzingis returns, Porzingis will then be the Robin to Luka's Batman. But what if Dallas adds another star in free agency, as it is believed they will now that they have $30 million in cap space? Well, if that happens, Tim Hardaway Jr. will fall all the way from the second option, like he arguably is right now, to the fourth option by the start of next season. While that does mean fewer opportunities, it also means better looks. Teams will not be able to key in on him the same way that they could right now. In short, if your best defender is on Luka Doncic, your best big man or wing defender is on Porzingis, and then a third star is drawing another good defender, what's left to guard Tim Hardaway Jr.? I mentioned earlier Tim Hardaway Jr.'s proficiency this season in the pick and roll. Dallas remains a pick and roll heavy offense, even with Dirk Nowitzki likely headed out the door into retirement following this season. But it's not just in those situations that Hardaway has been a breath of fresh air. In a day and age in which field goal attempts come from either right at the rim or attempting threes upon threes upon threes upon, hey, should be at a four point line? Tim Hardaway Jr.'s proficiency in the mid range game is a breath of fresh air. In those situations, pull up jumpers. Hardaway Jr. is shooting better than James Harden this season. Yes, he can take some bad shots, just like Monte Ellis could take some bad shots. But his impact is one that's kind of flying under the radar right now and could actually be a pleasant breath of fresh air. Now, Monte Ellis spent two seasons in Dallas, and for the first season and a half prior to a disastrous Rajon Rondo trade, it was a fantastic addition. Tim Hardaway Jr., meanwhile, is contracted through next season on an admittedly bloated contract that the Knicks gave him prior to coming to Dallas. As such, like Monte Ellis, though fleeting, his light could shine brilliantly in Dallas. We'll be back momentarily after a word from our sponsors to... We don't have any sponsors? 
how are we running the show? Okay. Well, we'll be back here shortly. Uh, hope, hopefully, we'll be back shortly. <laughs> Since dismantling their championship team in 2011, the Dallas Mavericks have routinely swung big for the fences in free agency. Unfortunately for Dallas, they have struck out time and time again in their pursuits of big fish such as Dwight Howard, Darren Williams, Hassan Whiteside, and in 2015, DeAndre Jordan. However, something feels different this year about the Mavericks' fortunes. After drafting Luka Doncic, third overall in this previous NBA draft, and then completing a blockbuster trade with the New York Knicks just two weeks ago to acquire 23-year-old 7'3 sharpshooter Kristaps Porzingis, the Mavericks now believe they have a true young core, a true star tandem that they can build around for the next 20 years. If you're a free agent, this has to look more appealing than it did for Dallas post-title with a 34-year-old and plus Dirk Nowitzki. But why would the Knicks make a trade like this? Simple, they wanted to clear cap space for their own pursuits in free agency this summer. And after clearing about $70 million in cap space, they now have the opportunity to do just that. But one of the Knicks' biggest targets may actually still be on the Mavericks' radar. According to Westgate Las Vegas Superbook, the Dallas Mavericks are 10 to one odds to Please no. No, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. No, 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 don't, don't go to commercial, don't end the show, I got it. According to the Westgate Las Vegas Superbook, the Dallas Mavericks have 10 to 1 odds, the fourth best in the NBA to land Kevin Durant. Now, let's look at the pros and cons of this if you're a Mavs fan. The pro, Kevin Durant added to Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic is immediately a championship favorite. Next season, Mavericks are right there on that short list. And you don't just compete next year, you compete for the next two to three years likely as a result. Con. Kevin Durant's off-court antics and hostility towards the media and even just other NBA fans clapping back on Instagram, Twitter, etc. is undeniable. It's easy from afar to laugh about his burner accounts and things like that, but when it's your team and you're having to face kind of the frustration and embarrassment, be the butt of that joke, it's not as pleasant. That's not as big of a thing, that's, that's more a minor point. But here's where I'm concerned, and this is, this is the big part here for me, for me personally. If you acquire Kevin Durant, yes, you might win one or more championships, and at the end of the day, that is what matters. However, when the Mavericks paired Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis, Mark Cuban said that they wanted to keep them together for the next 20 years. He likened them to Dirk and Nash, whom he split up too early, and you know both guys went on to become Hall of Famers just apart. Their best years were spent apart, which is unfortunate. Cuban swears that as his biggest regret, he swears he will not let that happen for this pairing. He wants them to be in Dallas the next 20 years. That's great in theory if you have management willing and trying to make that a reality. But there's an aspect you have to consider. This is not your father's NBA anymore. Dirk Nowitzki, 21 years with one franchise, unheard of, literally has never happened before. Kobe Bryant, 20 years with one franchise with the Lakers, also exceptionally rare. Tim Duncan, 19 years with the Spurs, you don't get that anymore in the NBA, you just don't. Guys now move more fluidly than ever to new teams, and one of the guys that really and most controversially, arguably, spearheaded that movement was Kevin Durant. When Kevin Durant left the Oklahoma City Thunder, it wasn't just that he left, it's who he went to. The team that he failed 
to put away in the 2016 Western Conference Finals. It was viewed as a weak move, someone just trying to chase a guaranteed championship rather than really earning it. Now you can weigh and discuss the merits of those rings for Kevin Durant, but that's the viewpoint. And if he were to be in the Dallas locker room, in Luka's ear every day, in Porzingis' ear every day, do you think Kevin Durant would lecture those guys about loyalty to a franchise? No. The opposite is true. Kevin Durant would be in their ears and he would be telling them, even as Luka was coming up for his first max extension, hey, you don't need to take the max with Dallas. They might be able to give you the most money, but you can take a shorter deal now because of your age, earn a ton more money winning a championship elsewhere, and then still get a max deal where you go next. You don't have to take the money on the front end. That is true. It is true, but it smacks of disloyalty. And I understand not being loyal to an ownership or a franchise, but not being loyal to fans is what's frustrating here because Luka is royalty in Dallas right now and really around the NBA. And Durant, I don't think, likes to share that kind of spotlight. He's frustrated because he was tired of hearing that the best player in the world was either LeBron or Stephen Curry. So he went to Golden State, joined the 73-win super team and said, hey, I'm going to go be the best player on the greatest team ever, win multiple championships, multiple finals MVPs, and because I'm the best player, nobody will question that I'm the second best player in the world. And with the exception of maybe that first finals where he outplayed LeBron, that really hasn't been the case. It's still viewed as a weak move because he took the easy way out for a championship. You can't trust a guy like that, I feel. Now, you might look at my Oklahoma City ties and say, of course I would have that viewpoint, but it still bears mentioning. It's not a guy who is loyal wherever he goes. He's looking to bounce from Golden State now because now he realizes he's not going to get the respect he wants there, and he wants to go elsewhere to another major market, likely the New York Knicks, and go build something else. He's not loyal to you. He expects his fans, like LeBron's fans, to follow him anywhere he goes. And in today's modern NBA, that's really more and more the case. But it doesn't make the product better. It makes it a year-in, year-out pickup game where, hey, oh, we missed out on this primo free agent this year. Darn it, whereas in the past this would have set us back several years, now it's like, oh, wait a year, maybe two, and try again. This is, it's, it's a lesser product because you don't have any real feuds or storylines. Instead of great franchises clashing, you now have, oh, well, this star player, uh, he clashes with this guy, but they both moved teams like three times in the last four years. So, you know, it is what it is. Those guys have beef. No one else matters in the discussion. It's not as engaging of a product, and Kevin Durant is one of the front face... What am I trying to say here? One of the front figures in this discussion. You can't trust him. That's the long and short of it. You cannot trust Kevin Durant. You might win a championship. You might win two. You might win three during his stint here. But in the process, you're selling your soul. Kevin Durant will pu just, uh, he will poison the waters here in Dallas. You will not have KP and Luka for 20 years, probably regardless, but if you bring KD in, their stints in Dallas, instead of being six, seven, eight years, they might be three or four years. They're not going to be around because he is an influential figure who is like the snake, go figure, talking in your ear and polluting your mind. You don't make this choice if you're the Mavericks. You might win in the, in the short term, but in the long term, you are leveling your franchise. If you can't hold on to Luka Doncic beyond five, six years, you're in serious trouble anyway. But if you lose both of them, yeah, you might win a title or two, but then you're back in purgatory for another 10 to 15 years. Easy. You can't do it. You cannot sell your soul. You have to make the decision now and say no. That is not the right character kind of guy we want on our team. 
representing our franchise. Now you look at what else the free agent market has out there. Dallas has a lot of needs, of course. Yes, would a Kevin Durant be absurdly lethal with Luka and KP? Yes, KP even earned his nickname, the Unicorn, from Kevin Durant. Interesting fact there. Does it mean that he's bound to play here or play with KP at some point? I don't know if I would go that far, but KP has Durant's respect. Cool. Luka has Durant and several other stars' respect as well. Cool. But there are other pieces you can fit around here where you don't have to worry about the long-term sustainability and stability of your franchise. You, if, you're, if you're the Mavericks, this has to be a hard pass. I don't care if you're 10 to 1. I don't care. It has to be a hard pass. You might think, well, Kevin Durant is the best free agent in this class, bar none. You can't take anything else. Well, Kawhi Leonard's probably going to go to the Clippers or maybe stay in Toronto. Who knows? Uh, Kyrie, he's probably staying in Boston or going to New York, perhaps with Kevin Durant. I think he's going to go to a big market. Uh, Kawhi, I don't think he's going to come back to Texas at all. You have then lesser guys like in Nikola Vucevic. Now, with Vucevic, you're getting a primo big man, but at 29 years old. He can help you a lot and give you a little bit more of a traditional big man who can also extend the floor just a little bit. He would fit well with KP. That's the direction you need to go. You need to look for a big man because KP, as great as he is, he's never rebounded that well. And by trading DeAndre Jordan, you can talk about his def defensive deficiencies and all that, all you want, his effort, which I questioned more than a few times. But you have to at least acknowledge the guy averaged 13 or 14 boards a game. KP, in his best season, averaged just over seven. He's not gonna be an adequate replacement. You need to look elsewhere to get front court help. And if you sell your soul, mark my words, hear me now, quote me later, this will be the destruction of the Dallas Mavericks. Now that's rolling, and then uh, we'll adjust. So that's how we're starting it out with your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a rough couple years for the Dallas Mavericks in free agency. Since blowing up their championship team following the 2011 season, they have routinely swung and missed in free agency, missing out on guys like Dwight Howard, Darren Williams, Hassan Whiteside, and DeAndre Jordan, to name a few. To make matters worse, the Mavericks haven't won a single playoff series since winning the finals in 2011, with approximately four wins total between two separate series with the Spurs and Thunder. Let's see, and then from there, I didn't have that up. <laughs> I was like, this is actually really good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes when I'm just getting going, it takes me like a minute, and like once I get past like the content, uh -huh. it like the ad loop button like pauses. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I got this, I got this, and then sometimes it's just like, and I'm done. <laughs> Oop, ran out of track. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. You're like, it's like you're riding on the train tracks, laying down the yeah. next thing, in front of you. and then you like look back and like fumble the next one. Shit. <laughs> Since blowing up the championship team in 2011, the Dallas Mavericks have struggled despite numerous attempts to attract another big name free agent. They've gone after the likes of Dwight Howard, Darren Williams, Hassan Whiteside, and DeAndre Jordan in 2015, all of which went down in flames, leaving the Mavericks burned. However, something's different this time around. After drafting Luki, Luki? <laughs> I'm trying to say rookie sensation, Luca. <laughs> See, that would be a good blooper. <laughs> I, I was like sitting here in my mind, I'm like, this shit's going well. 